Welcome to Hatman Strats Back Daily Boxing News. Has Eddie Hearn lost his ambition? Now, before you say that's a ridiculous question, because this guy's got a billion dollar business or whatever it is, just hear me out. Back in the days when Eddie Hearn was still on Sky, he built an enormous stable of fighters, particularly heavyweight fighters. At one point, he might have had, what, 10, 15 heavyweights at one time? And over the course of several years, he probably had over 20 heavyweights. And the heavyweight division has been where all the money is in boxing over the past decade or so. Other than Canelo Alvarez, no one's even coming close to the type of money the heavyweights are earning. So Eddie Hearn was very competitive in trying to sign heavyweight talent. Fast forward to 2024, Eddie Hearn's now on the zone, and the heavyweight division is still where most of the money is. And this is normally the case throughout most eras in boxing, but occasionally you'll have periods where one of the lighter divisions is more lucrative. But it's still heavyweight right now. But if you look at Eddie Hearn's stable, it is absolutely wafer thin as far as heavyweights. Who's he got? Anthony Joshua, who's a fight or two away from retirement. We don't know what's going on with Philip Hergovich or what his contractual situation is. So there's a question mark over him. And Johnny Fisher, who as far as I'm concerned, is a novelty fighter more than anything. I know some people disagree, that's okay. Perhaps he'll prove me wrong. More power to him if he does. But that's my perception of him right now. A novelty fighter, a ticket seller. Compare that to Frank Warren's heavyweight stable. It is night and day. Warren's obviously got Tyson Fury still. He's got Jelly Zhang. He's got Joseph Parker. He's got Fabio Wardley. He's got Moses Atalma, Joe Joyce. Daniel Dubois, how could I forget him? Even man like Derek Chisora still sells tickets. He's also got an unbeaten Ukrainian heavyweight prospect called Vlad Serenko. 22-0, 19 KOs, 29 years of age. Frank Warren's actions, signing all these heavyweights, show me that even in his 70s, he's got loads of ambition. He wants to be the top dog. Whereas ever since the switch around in Saudi Arabia, where they pulled the plug on skill challenge and Prince Khalid and instead gave the reins to Turkey Al Al Sheikh, Eddie Hearn's energy has completely changed. And obviously this coincided with Anthony Joshua losing to Usyk twice. But his energy is totally different now. He no longer seems to be as competitive. He's accepted the role of Frank Warren's sidekick. To me, that is not a man who's displaying the type of ambition that he was displaying three or four years ago. Now he just seems like he's shrugging his shoulders. He's happy to be along for the ride with Frank Warren, but he's almost resigned himself, as I say, to playing second fiddle. And because of that, we don't see the same bold moves that he was making in the past, taking financial risks to sign certain talent. Frank Warren's still doing that. Eddie Hearn isn't. Even Ben Shalom's doing it, but Eddie Hearn isn't. Frank Warren always used to dismiss Barry Hearn as being an accountant and not a true boxing man. He always said that Barry Hearn thought like an accountant and ran his business like an accountant. And he acknowledged that while from a financial perspective, in terms of balancing the books, that can be a good thing. It also meant that in Frank Warren's opinion, Barry Hearn was never really committed to boxing. When the going got tough in the boxing business, Barry Hearn wouldn't get going. He'd instead bail out, abandon boxing. And that's actually what he did. Before this little bromance between Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn, he was saying that he wouldn't be surprised if Eddie follows in the footsteps of his dad and abandons boxing as well when the going gets tough. Eddie's not going to do it right now because the Saudis are still breaking him off those checks, albeit not as often as they're breaking off Frank Warren. But if and when that dries up, is Eddie Hearn really going to stick around? Even when he was still with Sky and still at the peak of his power, he would often say in interviews that he might only be around for another five, ten years. You guys remember that? Those old school interviews he did with Coogan? And he's also said he has no intention of carrying on as long as the likes of Frank Warren and Bob Arum. So the thought has always been there in his head not to stay in boxing that long. I suspect at this stage, Eddie Hearn's just looking at it again like an accountant. Not that Eddie's an accountant, but his dad is. Perhaps he's been advised by his dad. And they're thinking, you know what? As long as we can make easy money in boxing without putting up a lot of capital, without having to make that much of an effort, the kind of effort we used to make in the past, as long as these Saudi checks keep coming in, we'll stick along for the ride. But if it all dries up and we have to go back to competing with Frank Warren, who's now got this massive stable of heavyweights, forget all that. Let's close down the boxing division, or at least downsize the boxing division, hand the reins over to Frank Smith, and he'll basically be a small hall promoter or something. <laughs> that wouldn't shock me, because again, 
Eddie Hearn's actions of late over the past couple years are not those of someone who has a load of ambition. Not to my way of looking at it. I know he gives it all this big talk about being a global promoter and blah, blah, blah. Globally promoting who exactly? <laughs> you know? It's been a long time since he had Canelo in his stable. Boot Sennett is a good fighter, but he's still not mainstream. He might never be mainstream. He needs the right dance partners to be mainstream. Shakur Stevenson could put a glass eye to sleep. Nobody really wants to see him fight anyone unless it's Tank Davis. And good luck getting that fight made. Davis is a terrible diva. And of course, he's only got a short-term contract with Stevenson anyway. I guess he's still got Dimitri Bivol, but again, Bivol's not a household name anywhere, other than maybe in his particular part of Russia where he's from. Because sometimes when I criticize Eddie Hearn's stable, some matchroom fanboys start talking about how talented some of his fighters are. I'm not denying that he's got talent in his stable, but boxing is a business. You have to have fighters that are going to sell tickets sell pay-per-views ultimately. And I just don't see much pay-per-view potential in his stable right now. He hasn't been really fighting to sign that kind of talent. And you know, this might sound kind of trivial, but it's actually not when you think about it from a psychological perspective. Eddie Hearn losing all these purse bids, and he's been losing most purse bids going back several years now. I think that sends the wrong message to potential signings. He loses purse bid after purse bid after purse bid. If you're a potential star, you're going to look at that and say, if I sign with Eddie Hearn, is he really going to fight for me? Or is he just going to sell me out to the highest bidder? Now, if it was a massive bid that beat Eddie Hearn, okay. But oftentimes there'll be relatively small bids, a few hundred grand. And Eddie Hearn isn't willing to stump up the extra bit of cash to win the bid for his fighter and get the fight on his terms in his hometown or whatever the case may be. I just don't think that's a good look. I understand he's being economically shrewd for the short term. He doesn't want to pay any more than he thinks the fight is going to generate, obviously, but other promoters like Frank Warren, Bob Arum, PBC sometimes, even Ben Shalom, they're thinking more long term, losing money on a show because they see it as a long term investment, developing a fighter, building his profile. Eddie Hearn doesn't seem so willing to do that anymore. It's like he just wants ready-made products. But again, if you're losing all these purse bids, are ready-made products really going to want to sign with you? Will we ever see another time when Eddie Hearn is back to being fiercely competitive with other promoters, trying to secure fighters' signatures? Or are those days gone for good? Maybe as Eddie Hearn gets older, he is becoming more like his dad in the way that he thinks, in the way that he runs the business. It's not really about the love of the sport and the passion. It's just about figures on a balance sheet. Just some thoughts, just some musings on Eddie Hearn. I don't hate the man despite what the Matchroom fanboys seem to think. I'm just looking at things objectively. Surely you're not going to still try and deny the fact that Matchroom boxing are going into a trough. You can't still seriously try and claim that they're still at the peak of their powers. You can't be that delusional. Surely, I told you at least two years ago now, the matchroom were on the decline. But understand what on the decline means. It doesn't mean that the company's on the brink of going bust. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying they're not in quite as strong a position as they were a few years ago. Never mind about all these billion dollar valuations of the company, because there are many ways to value a company. And depending on which calculation you use, the numbers can be very different. A boxing promotion company may be valued based upon the number of fighters they have in their stable at any one time, how much their contracts are worth, how much their television contract is worth with the zone, what type of budget the zone have given them. All of this may be factored in to how much matchroom boxing is worth. And we're talking about matchroom boxing because the valuation that's floating around for matchroom was for the entire company, not just the boxing division. And believe it or not, they make a lot of money from the other sports they're involved with. People might not think so, but they actually do. From darts, snooker, fishing, so on and so forth. More money than you would think. Matchroom boxing do not have the momentum that they had a few years ago. Surely you can see that. Surely you can see that the momentum is now with Frank Warren. For better or for worse, that's just how it is. Anyway, I'll leave it there. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video, share, subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll catch you on the next one. I'm out. Are you sick and tired of the mainstream mindset? Does the dogmatic conformity and pathological ignorance have you tearing your hair out in frustration? Then don't be alone. Come and join our brotherhood on Patreon. We stand as a beacon of reason against an army of insanity. You'll gain access to my weekly topical podcast, 
where we take more deep dives than Jacques Cousteau on an endless variety of subjects. There's also videos, interviews, live Q&As, as well as a vast back catalogue of previous episodes, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen via the Patreon app or download in high quality MP3. Connect with myself and hundreds of other members in our Element chat group. There's no contract, no commitment, you can cancel at any time, and it's cheaper than a Mickey D's McMuffin. Just head to my Patreon page via the link below this video and select the tier called the Brotherhood of Reason. I'll see you over there.